Get this first part out of the way. I'm not going to put fan art on this particular part uh, because this is more me moaning and groaning about uh, something going on with YouTube. Uh, not just my YouTube, but other people have dealt with this as well. So I want to show you guys something. This is the splash page for my channel itself. Uh, now, there is content that's supposed to be on here, and it was a video that I did about COVID-19, correcting misinformation uh, on COVID. Uh, this information itself was that apparently somebody said, uh, and it had been a thing on a website called, I can't, it was a European website, I can't remember what it was called at this point, um, but they basically said that miscarriages were caused by the COVID vaccine, which, when you look at the statistics, not really. It ended up being a huge post hoc ergo proctor hoc thing. We ran the numbers on it on the stream. We looked into the data for it. We did a whole thing going over the data itself. But let's go ahead and look at this. So you see that I've put in an appeal. Just so everybody knows that I am in the middle of fighting this. Also, thank you very much, Lunar Muse Serenity, for the subscription and Stromboli Wi Fi for the 10 bits. Just found out chat doesn't show you until you actually go on camera. Uh, missed my first message. Have some more pits. Well, thank you very much. Um, okay. So, if we look here at the actual strikes, now I have a history of getting a few fraudulent strikes on my channel. Uh, there is a there is one strike on here that YouTube actually won the appeal on, and that was on the Steven Anderson video, which I'm not going to play right now. But it was a YouTube poop taking the moment where he said that he was gay and just running with it and running it into the dirt. Uh, and YouTube apparently thought that was hate speech and they upheld their decision to keep that video off. So that video is on other sites like BitChute and shit. Uh, despite how much I have disdain for those sites, uh, that is where that content can be found uh, going forward. Now, the actual video in question here uh, was this one which YouTube has taken down and has been removed for violating YouTube's copyright, uh, community guidelines, not copyright guidelines, community guidelines. Uh, I wish I could show well, I can show you guys the video itself. I can go to my Odyssey account and I can grab it from there. Um, but that's not the point. The point is that video was correcting misinformation. That's what the whole video was, was me finding this information about COVID and correcting it, which in an ideal world is exactly what YouTube should want on their website. Now, I have no problem with people getting hit for terms of service violations where they are actively spreading this information about COVID-19, about, uh, you know, about the vaccines, about all of that, because that information is dangerous. And I don't think that people should be able to spread that information without it being stifled in some way. And it's not enough merely to have the other side of the story available for people to watch because not everybody is going to do that. In many cases, once somebody stumbles on that misinformation, the damage is already done. They've already made their decision, and it is much harder to pry somebody out of a belief if they happen upon that video first versus if they happen, say, upon my video right afterwards. Not everyone is as logical a thinker as you think they are. And that's not me trying to downplay anybody's ability. That's just kind of reality. Not everybody engages in critical thinking. And not everybody has to. There's nothing wrong with just living your life. But because of that, I do have to make the appeal that sometimes misinformation does need to be knocked off of the website. But what I did was not misinformation. Now, in previous times, strikes like this have happened on my channel uh, because... When I tackle someone like, say, Nick Fuentes, who has a very uh, virulent and even violent fan base, they will do everything in their power to get my video taken off because they don't like me talking about their favorite content creator. And you know what? I can understand that. As a fan of other content creators, it makes sense. You would want to defend them. But in those situations... <laughs> also, Juventualone... Thank you so much for the gifted sub. Um, in those situations, though, YouTube's generally pretty okay with kicking all of that off, making sure that nobody is able to benefit too terribly long uh, from one of those strikes knocking down a video. At least in my case, uh, those strikes were taken off of my channel 
fairly quickly. I mean, there was a point in time where I got hit with two strikes back to back and they both ended up getting lifted uh, right after having a Twitter susp- or a Twitch suspension that I am still in the middle of appealing because YouTube is generally faster to deal with these appeals than Twitch is for some reason. Anyway, the point is, this is a thing that I've got experience with from, uh, from the past. My issue, though, is not that this might be resolved, because that doesn't fix the problem. First of all, if you've got mental health issues, getting the hit that says, oh no, you're not going to be able to upload, oh no, you're not going to be able to do what is my full-time job, that can be enough to dissuade yeah. me from doing anything for yeah. quite a bit. Kamadako uh, Gompachirino, uh, Gompachiro, thank you very much for following. Um, so not only is it a mental health issue, for me at least, where I'm having to just kind of absorb the hit and absorb the hit and absorb the hit. Um, it's also the fact that this has happened to other content creators besides me. Regardless of your position on him as a person uh, or the things that he has said in the past in regards to trans people in sports, there is still a lot of good information that has come from, say, rationality rules as an example. And I know, for instance, with him, he is no longer debunking conspiracy theories on his channel. The reason being, YouTube bots cannot seem to tell the difference between a debunk and between legitimate misinformation. And again, I know that there's misinformation that has come from rationality rules, but the stuff that he's had that was struck was not misinformation in this particular scenario. And there are other content creators on the platform that are doing the same thing. I know that there's a lot of stuff that, say, Telltale Atheist has had to scrub from his content in order to make sure that it never gets hit by YouTube's bots. We have to police ourselves to an almost unreasonable degree to make sure that we do not get hit by the bots here. I, for one, don't want to stop debunking nonsense. I, for one, do not want to stop looking into people who are spreading misinformation that is harmful to people and providing context and other ways of dealing with that shit. I don't want to stop doing that. So I will not be taking the position that, say, Rationality Rules has and no longer doing that kind of content on my channel. I will still be doing it going forward. Because while I know it's a landmine... I know it's a landmine that is not a terms of service violation because I know that I'm not spreading misinformation here. I am using information from the consensus of experts, which is literally exactly what YouTube has in their COVID-19 medical misinformation policy. Please use the information that is, con that is currently consensus among medical experts in the field. That is what I am doing. That is why I, what I have done, and as I know I have not engaged in a terms of service violation, I will continue to do this kind of content. However, I do want to let it be known for you as a viewer that this type of content does always come with a risk. It does. Never and while I would love for this to be a super convenient uh, springboard for me to say, hey, I'm losing a week's worth of pay from this, very likely, depending on when the appeal goes through. You should go subscribe to my Patreon. That doesn't fix the problem. Putting more money in my pocket in the short term on Patreon uh, doesn't really fix the issue of this. It doesn't fix the issue of us as content creators having to be hyper vigilant about stuff that isn't even a violation of the TOS. We agreed to this terms of service when we hopped on the platform. But in situations like this, when we do not violate it, I don't know why we have to be so vigilant so as to not cover certain topics at all, like misinformation and debunking, merely to keep our channels safe, which I think hurts the integrity of our channels, especially if those are some of the principles that our channels have been founded on. One of the oldest series on my channel, despite my inability to put out content for it now, is the Dangers of Woo series. The entire point of that series is to show misinformation about, uh, about science, about medicine, and to show why that misinformation is wrong. Show why we can think about this stuff in a broader sense. Show why... Uh, things like the anti-vax movement are, you know, wrong about the shit that they say. 
reasons that the flat earth movement are wrong about the shit that they say reasons that the uh the covid 19 conspiracy conspiracy nuts are wrong about what they say i think there's value in that kind of content but for some reason I have to have a consideration just about every week with something like this over whether or not I can cover that kind of content safely on my channel. As again, this is my full-time job. And when we get these little YouTube vacations, the end result of this is that we have to determine whether or not we're even going to keep that content up on our channels because of how much of a risk it poses. I know another curator on the con on the uh, platform, Xander Hall, has now started deleting all of his VODs on YouTube because there are people who will go through his VODs and scrub it for every little tiny thing that is said that can potentially be used against him and will hit him for a strike with it and have done so before. And despite the fact that he's able to stream on his platform again now, he's had to take that hypervigilant stance going forward as well. I don't see this as healthy for most of the content creators here who do not violate terms of service. YouTube, we are doing what you have asked us to do. We have agreed to your terms of service and we are continuing to abide by it. When we abide by your terms of service and we do not violate it, I would appreciate our channels not getting punished repeatedly at random by fucking robots. That would be great. Before I end this little segment here, uh, I do want to say Zbot1, thank you for the follow. Price Kruger, thank you for the follow. And Goth Geek Gaming, thank you so much for the raid. Hopefully, hopefully, all of you who have come in from the raid will yeah, have a fun time here. And Cheraxville, thank you very much for the follow as well. With that said, I know this is a short one, a short little segment, but I wanted to update on what's going on on my channel, the considerations this has towards me. Uh, and that I'm still going to keep covering this kind of content, just to reassure people. Uh, I'm not going to take the stance of backing down off of it just because it inconveniences me a lot and it makes me take a financial hit. I still believe this type of information needs to be corrected, and I've got a platform with about 38,000 people on it. There's no sense in me not using it for good where I can. So, with that said, thank you all for watching this bit. If you want to support the channel, you know how to do it, and insert end of video tagline here.